besties. I have found myself in a bit of a conundrum. I have bought a ton of books in the past six months or so, and I have been reading a lot lately. However, I feel like my physical TBR just keeps growing and growing and growing, and I want to kind of tackle that. I thought the best way to tackle that is to create a TBR jar and to have a monthly video where I read three to four books on my physical TBR. There's a lot of books on my physical TBR that I don't know whenever I'll be able to fit them into a concept or a theme, so they just keep falling falling into the back burner, but I decided if I were to create a TBR jar and to pick out three or four books and to make this a monthly video, that might help me tackle my physical TBR a bit better. So what I have done is that I have put all the books that I have not read that are on my bookshelves into this jar. And every month I'm gonna pick at least three to four books to read. And hopefully that'll help me tackle my physical TBR. I'm thinking I might as well pick out four books since this is my first one. This jar is already like super super full and I can't like exactly <laughs> shuffle it in a way so I'm just gonna randomly stick my hand in here and pull out a book. So let's see what that first selection is kind of hard to get to the bottom of this so I didn't fold these slips of paper that well. What does that say? Dead of Winter. Okay this is good because this is a book that is a thriller and one that I think it's one of the book club picks for the month. I didn't get to it just because I had a lot of other things going on but this is one that I actually really really want to read so this is exciting and I am kind of in the mood for a thriller. I just know that it's giving no exit vibes where people are stuck in a lodge or a cabin and it's in the middle of winter and there's a murder or maybe multiple murders. So I'm excited for this one. Okay, and then on to the next one, just kind of shuffling it around here, picking from the bottom. Okay, what is this? What is this one? And treat me. Okay, no, this is actually really, really good because this is actually the book club pick of the month and I really, really want to read this one. I know that it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It is romance and fantasy blended together. That makes me a bit nervous because I haven't read a good romanticy in a while that was able to balance the two types of genres. So hopefully this one will be it. And I'm actually like really, really excited to read this one. I own a special edition copy of it on my bookshelves. Okay, and next one. All right, what is this? This one, what is this one going to be? The House in the Cerulean Sea. Okay, this is a book that I bought a year ago. I had had this idea to do a concept vlog where I read only middle grade books. And this is a book that I bought for that vlog. I think I had planned to do that last year in the summertime and it just never happened. And so this is another book that just fell into the back burner, but I'm glad that I picked this one so I can get to it. I feel like the more that I shuffle my hand in here, the more that I'm like just crushing the pieces of paper. Let's see what this one is. Paladin Strength. Okay, this excites me because I read I read Paladin's Grace last year and I really really liked it. I think I gave it four stars and I'm really excited to like continue with that series because it's set in the same world as Sword Heart is and I didn't know that when I picked up Paladin's Grace. So I was like, ooh, a familiar world. I don't have to think that hard. It is, I don't wanna say that it's high fantasy, but it's also not cozy fantasy. It fits somewhere in between. So this is another book that I'm excited to get into. I don't know which one I'm gonna pick first, but let's just get started and let's just see what I'm vibing with. And I'll let you know what book I'm gonna pick next in the next clip. Good morning! Sorry, I'm looking not so great. I just took a shower and my hair is drying. But I wanted to give you guys an update. I did decide what the first book I was going to read and that book is Entreat Me by Grace Raven. Now this is a special edition copy from Arcane Society I think it is. I bought this book purely because of how beautiful it is. I went into this not really knowing what this book was at all. But as you can tell by where I'm at, I am more than halfway through this book. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. In our prologue, we find our main character, Ballard, who is the master of the castle or, or his region or whatever. He has been cursed by his wife. I'm understanding that him and his wife don't get along because I think he killed her lover. So she cursed him and the child that she just gave birth to, to what they're calling the flux. So at, I don't know what the frequency is for the flux. Basically when they go into the flux, they kind of turn into these beasts or they're monsters and they cannot control themselves. I kind of relate it to think of the Hulk when he hulks out and he doesn't know what he's doing and he goes into a rampage. But then our other set of characters that we're following are 
sitting at and Lua Vane, I think that's how you say her name. And they live a very modest life. Their father is a merchant, but they are in trouble. Their father have kind of gambled away most of their money. We understand that Sidia is the younger sister and she's very beautiful. And the man that her father owes money to wants to take her hand in marriage, but she doesn't want that. And then Lua Vane is the older sister who is widowed. And she is a strong female character. Sidia at the very beginning is in a relationship or a courtship with this man named Gavin and he kind of has a like, mysterious background and Lua Vane say is like we don't know this man we don't know Gavin but Sidia is convinced that he's going to ask for her hand in marriage so she sneaks away to the castle where Gavin is from and Lua Vane is like I need to get this girl back she just did something cray cray so she also follows her to the castle. Lua Vane is trying to be very protective of her younger sister and her virtue because I mean this is like ye old timey so like a uh, young girl's maidenhood is very important to her reputation and keeping that intact. And so Lua Vane is like, unless Gavin asks for a hand in marriage, like you will not be spending a lot of alone time with him because we can't ruin your virtue. And while Sinia and Lua Vane is spending a lot of time in the castle, Lua Vane gets into a romantic relationship with Ballard, the master of the castle. The Flux is a curse, basically, and because this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, the Flux is what makes him into a beast. It is fantasy light. I love the relationship that has been developing between Lua Vane and Ballard. Lua Vane is a very practical and she is very protective over her younger sister. The younger sister I don't really care that much about. I'm curious to how the curse is going to get resolved because in the Disney version of Beauty the beast all she had to do was kiss him and it, true love's kiss fixed the problem and dissolved the curse but like Lua Vane and Ballard have been going at it quite a lot and that has not solved the curse so I'm wondering how is that curse going to be broken I don't have that much left into it and I am gonna fish it today and I'll check in with you guys when my hair is less ugly and less frizzy and I have this kind of straightened and figured out good morning you guys I am looking a lot better than yesterday I fixed my hair and I have finished reading and treat me I'm gonna end up giving this four stars I did mention in my previous update that this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling it's four stars because I love the mixture between fantasy and romance in this book. I think Grace Raven did this just right. And I liked all the characters that were in this book, except for the dad. Like in the Disney Beauty and the Beast version, there is that dad who was kind of silly. And then in the live action version, the, the dad was also kind of silly. And in this book, the dad was kind of a loser. Oh! constantly wanted to be like we could just do away with the dad he didn't need to be in this book also the younger sister she was a little bit annoying but the real reason why it's getting four stars is because of that ending as anticipated the curse is broken and I don't think that's too much of a spoiler because if you know Beauty and the Beast at all then you know that's a huge part of the story but the way that the curse was broken is just so confusing to me like I had to go back and read how it was broken and I still don't get it it's just a little bit convoluted and I don't think that Grace Driven needed to drag it out like that but I would pick up another one of her book and frankly I probably will because I own Master of Crows the special edition version of it the next book I'm gonna pick up is Paladin Strength and this is the second book in the Saint of Steel series. There are four books in this series and I bought all four of them. This is the hardcover edition that I bought directly off of Tiki Fisher's website. I don't really know what this second book is about and it's been quite a while since I read Paladin's Grace so I might need to like refresh my memory a little bit. This is a little over 400 pages but I'm sure I could finish this within the next two days. I do have to work today and I do have to move a ton of my stuff so I think I mentioned in previous vlogs that I'm currently living at my mom's house but I'm going to be moving into my dad's apartment permanently. My dad works maintenance for this like real estate properties. They have multiple like properties and this company owns a apartment complex and because he's an employee there and he's a supervisor he is guaranteed to get an apartment so that if he has to like work emergencies he can be there like quick within a moment's notice so he it was given a two bedroom two bathroom apartment for free but he hardly ever stays there he only stays there when there is emergencies so the plan is for me to move into that apartment so I can just have a little bit of independence and I'm not like living with my mom and my dad all the time but I have to move so much stuff over there because when I initially moved out of the apartment that the ex-boyfriend and I shared together I moved 
all of my stuff into my dad's apartment like my bookshelves bed desk and all that stuff and I just left clothes here at my mom's house so I have to bring clothes and I have collected quite a few books that I need to move over there and then I have just a bunch of junk that I need to go through and throw out so I'm going to work for a little bit today and then I'm gonna spend the rest of the day packing and moving stuff hi guys uh, I'm here to give you an update. I have not picked a book in a week and that is because I have a lot going on in my personal life. Just to give you an update on that while we're here. In my previous vlogs I mentioned that I am unhappy with my job. For the past four months I have been actively looking for a new job. The problem with my current job is my manager. I do not like her one bit and she does not like me. I do really like the company I'm at and my coworkers, but that is just not enough to keep me going. And so I have been actively applying out to other places within the same industry that I'm in. So I finally got a job offer about a week ago and since then it's been kind of just go, 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 go. I have had to do the background test, do the drug test. I plan on giving my two weeks notice on Monday. And when I do that, I'll have exactly two weeks before I have to start my new job so I just have a lot of anxiety over having to notify my manager that I'm giving her two weeks because she is not the nicest lady in the planet and I expect to get some hate from her and some people from the leadership team I definitely think my coworkers will be happy for me I have probably the best group of coworkers that you could ever ask for and leaving them makes me sad and this is why I haven't picked up a book in the past week is just I just have a lot of life stuff happening and it's just been really really crazy but I finally decided to pick up a book today this book we are following Istvan. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He was in the first book. I think he was the captain of the Paladins group. And so he has decided to follow these murderers. But along the way, he's met this lady named Clara and she is a nun. But the thing about her is that she is a like a shapeshifter. She can shapeshift into a bear. She's trying to reunite with the sister nuns who are also bears or shape can shapeshift into bears. So that's kind of like what we're following along in the main story is trying to find figure out like what's going on with these murders. And then for Clara we're trying to figure out like where her sisters are and what's going on with them because we think that something bad has happened to them. And also there is a romance between Istvan I don't know if his name is Istvan or Istvan, not quite sure, but there's a romance between him and Clara that I find to be very cute. They are described to be as like bigger people, like big as in tall and strong, but also big as in they're a little bit thick. And I really like the way that Taking Fisher like diversifies her characters and these characters are older. So I, Clara, I know she mentioned that her she's 36. I think Esteban is closer to 40. And I just love the way that Taking Fisher is giving us these stories about people that are older and people who have diverse body types so I love that. I love the relationship that's been budding between them. I will say that I was very, very confused at this beginning of the book because it's kind of like hard to follow along with the audiobook. And I decided to like, because I own the book, to listen to the audiobook and read along with it to make sure that I'm just like comprehending everything. And I'm halfway through it, if I haven't mentioned that before. And I hope to finish it today. If not today, then I'll finish it tomorrow. I have like four hours left in the audiobook. So let's uh, keep it going. And hopefully I can finish this today. Hey guys, I'm not exactly looking my best today, but I do want to give you an update. I finished Paladin Strength last night and I think that this is going to be a three star book. It was just fine and honestly kind of forgettable. I was listening to the audiobook and following on with the book but my mind just kept drifting and thinking about other things. I feel like this is a case of right book wrong time. I probably should have waited to read this until there wasn't so much like going on in my life job wise and like personally. This might be something that I revisit way later on down the road. But I do want to say that I like the relationship between Clara and Istvan. My reason as to why this is getting three stars is because the plot itself was a little bit convoluted. That could have been my fault because I was having a hard time like following on with the book. So no fault to Cheeky Fisher for this one. This is probably just a me problem. Hi guys, just giving you an update on Dead of Winter. I'm a little bit more than halfway through it and if I'm being honest, it's a little bit boring. We are following our main character, Krista, and her boyfriend, Kiernan. They're going on this trip to this lodge in the middle of winter. I think it's following about eight people in total. I don't remember all their names, but they're all taking a vacation onto this lodge when they get kind of stranded out in the dead of winter. Slowly people start getting picked off and by picked off, I mean, goners. We have a kind of eclectic group of people here. We've got like a father son, a husband wife, a girl that's traveling on her own, someone who's been in the military. So like a very wide ranging group of people that are here to kind of like solve this mystery. But like I said it's kind of boring. I don't really care for our main character Krista and what's going on. 
I don't really like our main character, Krista. I mean, she's kind of basic and a little bit boring. And I feel like the way that Darcy Coates is writing this, you're not really being given the opportunity to guess who the killer is. I feel like she's just going to the stages of, okay, kill this one person. Okay, kill this other person. Keep up the suspense going. But usually when I'm away with my thrillers, I like to be able to kind of like guess or kind of like play along with what the plot is. I feel like she's giving us zero clues as to who the killer might be. So I'm finding this a bit lackluster and I am reading it all in one day. So hopefully I'll be done with this by the time I go to bed. But if I'm gonna have to write it right now, I'm probably gonna give it three or two stars maybe. It's just kind of boring. I've fallen asleep multiple times while reading this book and I've had to like go back a little bit because I'm reading it while listening to the audio at the same time. So like my thoughts keep wandering. That could be a little bit of my fault. So let me keep reading on and hopefully I will be able to finish this by the end of today and then I will give you guys an update. Hi, editing Lexi here to tell you I have no idea what happened to the rest of the footage of me reviewing Dead of Winter. You guys already know the past couple weeks have been hectic with the job stuff, with having to move to my dad's apartment, which I am now at. But to wrap up Dead of Winter for you, I started off this book with like an inkling of who might have done it, but my brain was thinking, oh, that's far too obvious. No way Darcy Coates would have done that. But then as we got the reveal and ending, I was in fact correct. So I was like looking at other people to be the villain or the killer. And when it was real, that who I originally thought was the villain was actually a villain. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I did not enjoy this book at all. I probably am gonna rate it maybe like two stars. One star book rating I really save for books that have really offended me. And this one has not offended me. I just thought it was boring. Um, I thought it was just a little bit predictable. This is another book that I want to sell or get rid of in some way because there is no need for me to keep this book. Anyway, that's it, back to the video. Coming to you with an update on this book, and I always want to say the title of this book wrong, so I'm just going to read it out. The House in the Cerulean Sea. I don't know why I want to say The House on the Cerulean Sea, but I'm a little bit more than halfway through this book. So we are following Linus Baker, and he is a caseworker for the Department of Children in this world. Like, think of it as like CPS. And he's a caseworker, and Linus is a man that never met an HR rule that he didn't like. He's very much like, there's a rule book, and I will be following that rule book. But then upper management reaches out to him and said, hey, we have this orphanage that we want you to pay a visit to and give us a report on how they're doing, how they're running. This orphanage is out on an island. So he travels there and then he meets Arthur Parnassus. Arthur is the caretaker of this magical orphanage. So in this orphanage, we're following six children. There's like a sprite, there's a green blob, there's a wyvern, there's Lucifer, there's a gnome. I don't know if that's quite six because it's a lot to follow along. And he is immediately concerned because he doesn't work with like magical creatures to that effect of these children a whole ton. And it also like in this world, like magical creatures are something to be wary of. People are scared of them. And so he's having to report back to upper management because I think upper management wants to shut down the orphanage. Right now, this book is sitting at a three stars for me. This is the book that I bought a whole year ago, like before I even started my YouTube channel because I had seen this one like getting a lot of like good reviews on YouTube and on Goodreads. But like I said, I bought this a whole year ago before I really refined my reading taste. And I think it's sitting at a three stars because of the children aspect. There's just something missing in the way that I was made up for me to like not like children. But what I'm vibing more with is Linus's change of his viewpoint towards magical creatures and this orphanage as he gets to know the kids and the caretaker, Mr. Parnassus. There is a little bit of a romance building between Mr. Parnassus and Linus. And also I could tell like the children are really like growing on him he's learning to like love the children so like in that sense if you think think of like a grumpy grumpy man coming into an orphanage and just be like yeah I'm here to just do my job and then his entire viewpoint changes because of getting to know these people I think it even says in the blurb in the book is like it's like he's it's a found family type of thing and that's where his like mind is kind of changing around because what he realized is that that Mr. Parnassus is really here for the children and is really there to take care of them because nobody else wants them. Where I'm at right now in the book is that Arthur and Linus are taking them to a trip into the town so they could buy some records and I feel like something is gonna go very very wrong because the townsfolks are scared of magical children. I think I have about maybe like two hours left into the audiobook but I feel like this is probably gonna sit at three stars. Like I'm not hating it but I'm also not like finding the cute and cozy like I wanted to. I'll check in with you guys once I'm done with this book. I have finished the house in the Cerulean Sea. Why is it not the house on the Cerulean Sea? 
That's confusing. But I have finished it and it remains a three star. It did get a little bit cuter and cozier towards the end. Linus Baker came around and really found the orphanage for magical creatures to be necessary. And like I said before, he was falling in love with the children and he fell in love with Mr. Parnassus. I think that was the part that like kept me going is the relationship between Linus and Arthur Parnassus. I found it to be very cute. I love them together. And then towards the end when Linus was like going back to the magical orphanage like cps version of it he was like no this place is he really went in and he was like no we, we need this place to exist know why this book is almost 400 pages long i don't feel like that was necessary probably maybe it should have been more closer to like 300 pages but again it is a three star book i probably will not be keeping this on my bookshelf because i only have two bookshelves right now and i have like very limited space i can't be keeping books that i'm giving three stars or less than that i really only want books on my shelves that are four star five stars like things that i would absolutely need to have and this is just not one of them so i'm going to probably unhaul this sell it. But I didn't think this was bad. It's just like not my cup of tea. It's it really was the kids in this book that uh, you know brought it down for me. Also, if it looks like I'm sitting on the floor, it's because I am. So my bookshelves and setup is over there. You can see I have still a lot of space on this bookshelf. And if I fiply guys around, I have my desk when I work from home here. My closet is now full of clothes. There's a ton of space in there. And then this on the floor, this is a bed frame. I did recently buy a very nice expensive bed frame, but I haven't bought a mattress yet. I'm currently and presently sleeping on this mattress on the floor. It does look like I'm sleeping on, but there's a twin mattress there that I'm sleeping on and my dog is also sharing the bed with me. It's very small. We don't quite fit in this really tiny twin mattress. So I'm gonna buy a queen mattress when I get paid at my job and then I'll have more space. But then if I flip you around to over here, back to a stack of pillows, the lamp and the bookshelves. So that's kind of how the room is oriented. Time to wrap up this vlog. I let a lot of time pass between finished reading these books and rating them because I just really wanted to sit with it and digest the story and make sure that I was giving it an appropriate rating. Starting with Entreat Me, this is the book that I probably like the most out of the four books that I read for this vlog. I'm giving this one four stars and I know I mentioned that earlier but it's gonna stay at four stars. This was a wonderful Beauty and the Beast retelling. I really love the balance between fantasy and romanticy. I think Grace Draven really and captured that really well. I mentioned earlier that I was a bit confused as to how the curse was broken, but I had someone clarify it to me. And I feel like if I had to go like the extra length to figure out how the curse was broken, then that was the part of the book that Grace Raven didn't do that much of a great job because I was really racking my brains as to how this curse was broken. But I still really like the book and I would recommend it. I love the story between Ballard and Louvain. So four stars, it's gonna stay as that. And I'm really glad to have this super nice special edition copy. And then the next book I read was Paladin Strength and this one is gonna stay at a three stars for now. I do believe that the problem that I had with this book is because of all the stuff that I was going through in my personal life with work and stuff like that that made me not 100% pay attention to this book so I feel like I need to reread it and then the next book I read was Dead of Winter. I do not know where I put this book. I truly feel like I have lost that book. There is a stack of books on the other side of the room that I'm not putting in my bookshelf because those are books that I want to unhaul or sell or get rid of. I actually started a pango shop because of this vlog so I'll put the link to my pango shop below in the description bar for you guys if you want to check out the books that I am unhauling there. I kind of actually want to read revise my rating to two stars because three stars I reserve for books that are just okay there's nothing wrong with it but dead of winter I just feel like it had like a silly premise and the reveal was so ridiculous that I feel like it deserves a two stars and then the last book I read was house in the cerulean sea I still don't understand why it's not house on the cerulean sea and this one's gonna stay out of three stars it wasn't as cozy as I want it to be the kid aspect really took me out in this book I really like the relationship but between Mr. Parnassus and Linus Baker. And that was really the only part of the book that I did enjoy. And that's a bit unfortunate. So this is another book that I will be unhauling, but it's gonna stay at three stars. It didn't offend me. It was just fine. I would recommend it. It just wasn't for me. I think I will be doing a video like this in the future again because I have so many books on my bookshelves that 
I don't have a specific plan to read them anytime soon. They don't fit in to a concept and I want to reduce the number of physical books that are on my TBR. I've actually placed myself on a book buying ban because I don't want to end up as like one of those YouTubers that end up having so many books that they wonder how they got there. I just want to have two bookshelves for now and keep it that way. I know this vlog was a little all over the place and it was kind of a downer because of all the things that I'm going on with my personal life and my job but I do have bigger plans for next week's vlog so stay tuned for that. If you like this video please subscribe, please hit the notification bell and check out my Instagram and Goodreads links that are down below for you and I will see you guys in another video next week. Bye!